Hello everyone, today I'm going to be interviewing my mom and I'm going to interview her about my great grandma Gladys Naomi Dixon Gunn. Okay, so first question is, describe your early life. My name is Jennifer and I am Gladys's granddaughter. So I will describe her early life. This is information that she recorded and wrote down for us to share. So she was born April 7th, 1926 in Southern Georgia. She was born to loving Christian parents who guided and directed her to be a good person while living at home. She grew up on a farm, which is actually still there and owned by the family. And there's actually several farms that were owned down the road by many family members. At the time, her parents did not own the land and her dad was, they did, it was called sharecropping. So the land was owned by others and and they farm the land at his expense and then they purchase seeds and plants and fertilizer with their own money and, they would, and then they would harvest the crops and then they would have to give the actual owner of the land half of what the the land produced as payment for living on the land. So it was actually quite prevalent in Georgia and southern states for that to happen. They grew up what was considered as poor during the Civil War. They grew tobacco, peanuts, corn, sweet potatoes, and other items or cash crops. Her father was quiet, no-nonsense type of man. He saw that his children were raised properly. He never showed much emotion, but occasionally she did see him in tears, and he was a kind and loving father. Her mother was a very small, statured woman, about five feet tall, and did not weigh very much. So my grandma, Gladys, who we're speaking about, was built much like her mother, and that has carried on in family traits. They were industrious people and took good care of their family. They washed their clothes outside in a tub and they would boil the water in a wash pot to remove bad stains. They would draw the water from a well by the porch. There was no washing machine, dryers, or electricity to heat the water. So they'd have to build a fire and heat up the water and then pour that over the clothes. They had chicken and geese and they slept on a feather bed, which I actually remember sleeping on when I went and visited them when I was younger. How did it feel? It was very uncomfortable. After that, we started getting a hotel room before we would go see them because they were Southern hospitality, and so they always fed us and had food for us there and always had a place for us to stay. So after, I remember sleeping one time on the bed, and it was tilted, and so we kept rolling off of the bed because it wasn't flat. (laughs) So after then, we started getting a hotel before we would go to the home. And the home was still there, and it probably is still there. I haven't been there for about 15 years, but the homes were still standing there. And I remember going up and visiting the family that her sisters moved into that house later on. And I remember going up there and being able to to go and, and visit them. And my grandma would let us have her car, and we would go on the back roads and drive, <laughs> and she would visit with family. And we, my brother, he was probably 10 and I was eight. And my grandma would just turn us loose on the back roads with her car. So I have many fond memories of Southern Georgia. Later on, they had, you know, additional cattle and stuff. They canned their vegetables, though, when she was younger, and that would carry them through the winter. They would get up early and prepare breakfast and grind coffee beans for the morning coffee. Sometimes they were short on food, and they were poor, but she didn't realize at the time that she was poor, but they were a happy family. So they would go into town, take them all day to go into town, and they would get a nickel, and they'd be able to go to the candy kitchen and that would purchase a large bag of candy. There was a large public restroom with rocking chairs that they would get to relax in and that was a huge event for them to go to town. So they didn't have a lot of toys. They created their own toys. They took an old tire and they would fit inside the tire and then roll them around. It's a lot of fun, he says. So they were happy and they got along well with each other. In the creek they would go swimming and she almost drowned one time and her brother rescued her. So I had, she says I had somewhat recovered he made me go back in the water so I wouldn't be afraid of it and they also had many watermelon fights so that was their creative way of entertaining themselves can you describe your school life so she would be picked up by a bus and transported to Moultrie Georgia for school she doesn't remember anything special about it she does remember getting a spanking because she was picking on another child which is kind of funny because she's the nicest sweetest lady and I can't imagine my grandma picking on somebody but apparently she (laughs) 
that it, she learned early that that wasn't nice. She did not graduate with her high school class, but she did get her GED and then went to community college and earned several credits. What did you do after college? When she was 18 or 19, she went to Atlanta, Georgia and got a job with Sears there for a while with her best friend. And her best friend married a soldier and went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Gladys followed and got a job at Western Union. And she was training to be a telegrapher. And that's where she met my grandpa, her husband, uh, Paul Gunn. And he had come in to send a telegram to his said aunt, but it was really his girlfriend. (laughs) And he had just been discharged from World War II. Did he have any children? Yes. Grandma and Grandpa, Gladys and Paul, they were married in April of 1946. They have three children, two girls and one boy. So the boy is Dennis, and he still lives in Florida. They moved their family to Florida after Wisconsin. And Dennis lives in, just outside of Orlando in Chuliota. And he's got three kids that live there. And then the oldest is actually a girl and her name is Sandy. And she lives part-time in Montana and part-time in Mexico. And then the youngest is my mom, Terry, your grandma, and we live in Utah. So those are the three kids. And And as far as job goes, she held many positions. Um, She worked for the United Negro College going, and that was in Orlando. And I remember going when I was younger and to help her at work during the summer. (laughs) You know, child labor laws, I guess, didn't exist. (laughs) So we would go. I would go with her and help her there. But she was also a licensed realtor, like I am. And she worked for the governor. And she has a lot of really cool pictures of when she went to, like, the governor's ball and things like that. So she did a lot of stuff to do with politics in Florida. So she was invited to a lot of really like high-end parties. And so I actually have some of her her dresses and jewelry and things like that that she would wear. And they wore mink coats. And I actually have two of her mink coats that she would wear to fancy parties. So she is and was a very well accomplished woman in her life and her career. And she did very well for herself coming from humble beginnings. So she was a member of of the Sarah Collum Democratic Club and Orlando Business Women's Association and Toast Mistress Club. And then um, she was also an Orlando beauty pageant chaperone. So she was just uh, involved in a lot of things in her life. Yeah, so where do you live now? So currently she lives in Hungry Horse, Montana, which is just outside of where I was born. And that's where Sandy lives. Her daughter lives part-time. And then her grandson, which is Sandy's son, David, she lives with him and his wife, and they help take care of her. And then currently in Montana. So she's 92 years of age. She's in good health. Um, She's thankful for the LDS church. She was a, a convert to the church, and she has attributes her good health to being abundantly blessed and just living a healthy life and she wishes that she had joined the church earlier in her life but she's happy that she has the membership that she has right now in her life she's truly she's a remarkable woman she has a really big heart she'll do anything she can for her family she has always saved her money and done very well for herself considering the humble beginnings she came from and she's always been just a really unique incredible woman that I personally have a lot of respect. She's a remarkable woman and I would be honored to be half the woman that she (laughs) is when I turn 92. She's in wonderful health and she loves to joke around with you guys and she'll chase you guys around even at 92 years of age (laughs) and tickle you and she's had a wonderful life and has left an incredible legacy. So thank you for joining me today. You're very welcome.